won't you stand with us this morning as we worship together? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, his free. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me.
to have our second session of our family VBS. And so this morning is going to have a few of those kid elements within the service. Uh, I'd like to introduce Caleb Cook. Caleb Cook is uh, our children's pastor candidate. He's from North Carolina, and he has been interviewing this week about po the possibility of coming to serve here as our children's pastor. He actually is our guest speaker tonight and throughout this family VBS. He's uh, a gifted speaker. Uh, he can do ventriloquism. And I thought about having him talk. I move my mouth, and you think I'm preaching this morning, but I didn't think that would work very well. Uh, and then he also can make balloons and so forth. He's going to do a great job this week, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, our family VBS has its own investigator. Yes, that's right, its own investigator. She is the brightest. She is the best of our time. Would you please welcome investigator Michelle. <laughs> oh, it is so nice to see so many here for the debriefing. I am just so excited. I have traveled the expanse of this incredible world in search for faith facts on the Holy Spirit. And I can't wait to share these with you. But first of all, kids, I have a question for you. Kids, have you ever been told, clean your room, do your homework, make dinner, set the table? Yeah? Yeah? How about this? Eat your vegetables because it's good for you to grow big and strong. Yeah? Yeah? How about adults? Have you ever said those things? Adults, have you ever been told, okay, Get this contract signed and done by tomorrow. Don't drive too fast. Obey the speed limit. Have you been told, clean the garage, put down the lid, put the dishes in the dishwasher? <laughs> yes, we've all had responsibilities. And with responsibilities might come a response. Let's categorize that into two. How many of you guys have had a response of, wow, this is fun. I get to do something that I haven't done before. I'm being entrusted with something new. If you have ever had that experience, I want you to give me a fist pump and a woohoo. Woohoo! About three of you, yes! Have any of you ever had this response? Like maybe when it's, Let's just call it not so fun. Like, oh, clean up after the dog. Again and again. Yeah. So if you've ever had that experience, I want you to give me a shoulder slump and a sigh. <sighs> yeah. So we all get different responses, right? Anyhow. When we have some of those times, wouldn't it be wonderful to have someone to help us so that job doesn't seem quite so hard and more manageable and perhaps even fun? Wouldn't that be something to have a helper? Hold tight. Hold on. I have some great news for you. We are going to talk about today and in the next three nights about the helper, yes, the helper, the Holy Spirit. He will help us. And did you know that when you invite the Holy Spirit, actually, let me backtrack that one. When we invite Jesus to live in us and to be part of our lives, we're also inviting the Holy Spirit. Isn't that cool? So when we follow Jesus Christ, we are following God. God is the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus Christ is the Holy Spirit. And that reminds me of today's faith fact. If everyone would please stand up to your feet and look up on the screen. And say this with me. The Holy Spirit can live in me. Now, I want you to say that with some actions with me. Would you please hold this? Thank you. All right. The Holy Spirit can live 
in me. Now let's say it one more time like you really mean it. Ready? Ready. The Holy Holy Spirit Spirit can can live live in in me. me. Woohoo! You guys can all have a seat. That just makes me so excited to hear that. And it also makes me incredibly, incredibly um, hungry. So I must continue my quest. But I will see each of you tonight, I hope, as we continue. Signing off for now, Inspector Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. All right, so our memory verse for this week, our truth verse, is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Zechariah 4, 6. Let's say that out loud together. Are you ready? Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Zechariah 4, 6. We're going to have some prizes for the kids who memorize that. So we're going to, let me just for a few moments now, uh, preach on Acts chapter 10. It's a long portion of scripture. It's a long narrative. It's actually the longest story recorded in the book of Acts. And let's just walk through this together, okay? Acts chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. So this man, by the way, was powerful, and he also made very good money. He was wealthy. And it says there in verse 2, He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. This is very unique to read because here is this Roman uh, centurion who feared God, which implies that he worshiped, implies very clearly, he worshiped the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but he was not a Jew. How did you become a Jew? What is one thing that you would need to do in order to become a Jew? You would need to be circumcised. And so this man was not circumcised. He decided not to go that route, but he was maybe perhaps even connected to a Jewish synagogue. But whatever it was, he did have faith in God of the Bible. He feared him, and his faith wasn't dead. He also gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly. Verse 3, one day at about 3 in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. I think we all would, wouldn't we? What is it, Lord, he asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. So what's interesting here is that the, 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 verse 4 his gifts to the poor and his prayers were a blessing, a sacrifice that honored the Lord. The Lord heard these. He noticed them. Now, when we read a story like this in the Bible, we often think, man, that's just bizarre, the crazy things that happen during Bible times. But let me just point out that right now, there are documented, documented cases of Muslims in the Middle East having visions and dreams of Jesus getting directions in those dreams and and visions, and they coming to know Christ through them. So the Lord is still ministering to people through visions and dreams. I know that's bizarre, isn't it? But it's true. You can go look on uh, the CBN network. I've watched these uh, people being interviewed and how these former Muslims came to know Christ through seeing visions or dreams. Now, a question that people often ask is what happens to people who are distant from, from hearing the gospel and they never hear the gospel? What will, do, what will happen to them? And they, what they're really asking about is will God judge them in a certain way? Well, they're asking about God's justice. But Cornelius was not a believer in Jesus Christ, but he was seeking God. And therefore, God sent Peter to Cornelius to tell him about Christ. And this is what Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 is all about. It it says there that God is a rewarder of those who seek him. And if anybody is sincerely seeking God, they're going to find him. 
Let's move on. Verse 7. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. Joppa was about 30 miles south of Caesarea. So Caesarea is a, is a, uh, like a capital. It's an outpost. It's a Roman city. And he sends these three guys down to Joppa to get Peter. Verse 9. And so Peter is now in Joppa, and he's, he's going to go pray. And he goes, and, he's, and you know this story. He, he goes up to the roof. Back then, uh, homes had flat roofs. He's up there. He's praying during the day, and he has a, a vision. And the Lord three times drops this blanket from the sky, and it's filled with animals that are unclean. Now, to a Jew, this was very offensive. This was very uh, against their ceremonial laws there in the Old Testament. And, and over and over again, the three times he just was confused by what this was all about. And, and when, when this came down, the Lord said to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat this stuff. And Peter's like, gross, no way, I'm not doing that. I, I've never done anything impure like that. And then the voice said in verse 6, in, in between 9 and 16, it would have been verse 15, he said, do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Now, there's a lot of meaning behind that one verse, behind that saying. But in the context of this chapter, what God was primarily saying was this, you Jews consider the Gentiles unclean. And you need to change, have a change of heart on this one. Because I value everyone on planet Earth, whether you're Jew or Gentile. And I want them, if I make a Gentile clean, you better accept them. Now, it can also refer to the Old Testament and the ceremonial laws and the, and the guidelines that it has there, sacrifices, festivals, special days, circumcision. All that is no longer part of our New Testament faith. But this was confusing to Peter. So when he first heard this, he still had no idea. Matter of fact, after he had these visions, he's like, I don't know what this is all about. I don't understand what's going on. And, and you have to understand something true, 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 uh, true of Peter at this point. He would not have wanted or thought it was possible for a centurion, a Roman centurion, to come to know Christ. This was just foreign thinking to him. He would never even think that thought. But God was trying to break down the walls that were in the first century church. The first century church at the beginning was primarily Jews. And Jews were reaching Jews very well. The problem is, is they were too prideful to reach the Gentiles. And finally, the Lord was breaking down these walls, and he, the, one of the first people he used was Peter. And think about how divided they were. How much they despise one another. And then I thought, how divided is our culture today? How divided are we politically, economic, economically, by race, by, uh, by education, all the things that divide us in this country? But what should unite us? Our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? You know, we're not all going to agree on everything. Can we agree on that? <laughs> right? We're not going to agree on every single issue on planet Earth. There are going to be things doctrinally we may not agree on all the time. There may be things that, now obviously there's core doctrines that we have to believe on. But there, you know, there are end time events. Are we all going to agree on every single end time event? There are, there are churches in our town that have different views on Scripture. There are things that may divide us politically. There may be things that divide us by our race or so forth. But folks, when it comes to Jesus Christ, when it comes to our faith and our Savior, there is a unity that the world cannot understand. And we're one at the cross. We are seeing such hate and division, and I hate it. I hate the hypocrisy that's going on in our culture. I'm and the arguments that are going on. I hate what the lies are being poured in into our culture. And I, what I hate about it is it's bringing division. It's bringing division to our culture, our country, and even, unfortunately, to churches. 
But we need to fight through that and say, we are one in Christ. If you have faith in Jesus, you are my brother and sister in Christ. Let's move on to the story in chapter 10, verse 17. So Jesus, or Peter has this vision, and while he's having this vision, he hears, hey, there's three guys down there, they're here for you. He goes downstairs, he finds these three guys, and they explain to him what happened in, in Caesarea, and he's like, okay, I'll go with you. And he invited them into their house, he showed them some hospitality. The next day, they got up, and they went back to Caesarea. So they get to Caesarea, and they get there, and Cornelius is expecting them. He has his friends, his relatives, all there at his house. So imagine a big group is at this house, this wealthy man's house. And, he, and at first, Cornelius falls at his feet, at Peter's feet. And he's like so honored, and, he, and Peter's like, get up, I'm only a man. And, so, and then, verse 27, it says, while talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, and this is on your screen, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. I mean, what a nice way of greeting a whole crowd, right? I, I just want you guys to know that I, we really think you're a bunch of scumbags, and I really shouldn't be here. But look how he responds. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask you why you sent me? And then he goes on and tells Peter about the, the vision of the angel and what the angel said to him and how he needs to go get Peter. So I sent for you immediately. This is, this is a, a, the centurion speaking, Cornelius. And he says, now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. So all these people are eager to hear the Apostle Peter preach the gospel. And that's exactly what he does. He starts preaching the gospel. Look at these verses. I don't know how, how well you can read that, but then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. He's saying God doesn't value Jews more than Gentiles. He doesn't value Gentiles more than Jews or race over other, another race. In every nation, do you see this? In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. That has always been the heart of God. Why did God bless Abraham? So that he would be a blessing to all nations. What does it say throughout the Old Testament? What does it say throughout the Psalms? What does it say, I'll give you one example, Psalm 117. Exalt the Lord, all ye nations. It has always been the heart of God for everyone to know him, to turn from their sins, to put their faith in him and trust him for, for how to live their life and to have eternal life. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. And we have sent missionaries all over the world, and they have experienced that. Verse 36, this is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching, John the Baptist began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Isn't that a great summary of the life of Jesus? He went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, and for God was with him. Is that not our heart's desire here at Carnival First? That we will do good in our culture, and our community, and we'll bring healing to those around us. Because our lives, the people's lives around us are broken. Whether it's physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, they need the healing of the Lord, and we are his vessels for that. And then he goes on, and he, he keeps talking about how Jesus was put to death, and how he rose from the grave, and how they were witnesses to his death and to his resurrection. And as the people in this crowd at the Cornelius' house is hearing the gospel, they are putting their faith in Jesus. 
And in verse 43, it says this, and, and the prophets testify about him. The Old Testament pro- testifies about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53 would be the prime example. And then he says, everyone who believes in him, Jesus Christ, receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Now that word everyone, again, that may not seem like a big deal to us in 21st century. All of us, for the most part, I'm sure, are Gentile. But to that crowd, and specifically Peter and, the, and his gang, this was a new concept. Everyone. Everyone matters to God. Everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins. Peter's sermon was much likely longer than this. Luke probably summarized it, gave us the abbreviation. But look at verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers, the Jews, believed who had come with him, who had believed with Peter. Let me read that one more time. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished. They're shocked. They're like, I cannot believe this is happening. That the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, oh my goodness. Look, they've received the Holy Spirit like we did in Acts, back in Acts chapter 2. And so, and what was the Acts chapter 2 experience? These people who were already Christians received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit came upon them, they spoke in other tongues and they prophesied and the Lord uh, filled them with power to be witnesses. And so Peter sees this and these other guys see this like, look what's happening. It's happening to the Gentiles. And he says, let's go fill up the horse trough and let's start dunking these folks because they are truly Christians. And so they get water baptized in the name of the Lord. Let me give you three, four quick uh, take-home points before we close. Number one, I'm going to go through these very quickly. Number one, the Holy Spirit is a gift from the Lord. The Holy, look at the, it says the Holy Spirit fell it's from above. The, Jesus baptizes us. He, when we put our faith in Christ, which is the first step that we should do, we have the Holy Spirit in us. And then there's this second work of the Holy Spirit, which we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that comes upon people. And it is a gift from the Lord. The Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message, meaning they put their faith in Jesus. The gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the, on the Gentiles. So the first thing is the Holy Spirit is a gift. Number two, the Holy Spirit, this gift is for all believers. Again, the Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. And then if you look at Acts chapter two, you'll see Peter preaching a message and referring to how this is for you and your children and for all those who are far off. This gift of the Holy Spirit is for everyone. God shows no favoritism to anyone. He wants all of us to turn from our sins, to accept him as our Lord and Savior, to trust in him to save our soul from hell and to give us eternal life in heaven and to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then number three, uh, the gift leads to speaking in other tongues. Now, every Christian has the Holy Spirit living in them. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a second work of the Holy Spirit, leads to people speaking in other languages. We see this pattern in the book of Acts. We see this pattern where unbelievers put their faith in Jesus, they have the Holy Spirit living in them, then they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they then speak in tongues. You will see this pattern in Acts 2, Acts 8, in this chapter 10 and chapter 19. Now, this coming Wednesday, I want to speak specifically on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to pray for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and to speak in other tongues. If you don't seek that, want that, that's okay. It doesn't mean you're not a Christian. But if you do, and I pray that you'll be hungry for this, 
that you will come and receive this blessed gift. This gift of the Holy Spirit has meant so much to me throughout my life. I, I can't imagine not having my prayer language. I can't imagine not be able to have that gift to strengthen me and empower me when I, my thoughts go sour and I start to use my prayer language, how that helps me overcome that or temptation or whatever struggle I may have. The, there's power that we have in, through that gift. Come this Wednesday if you would like to learn more on that. But the final thing I just want to point out, and we'll close with this along with a quick video, is this. And I like to sing, this service went fast. The gift should be received. This gift of the Holy Spirit needs to be received. Let me put this in the light so you can see this. What happens when you put Mentos in a Diet Coke? Does anybody know? What happens? It explodes? All right, so let's, let me just show you what happens. You take the Mentos, right? You get your Diet Coke, and then you put them in, right? So let's try that. Is that what's supposed to happen? So what's going on here? I gotta take the cap off. You're such a good boy, Ed Dugan. You listen so well. That's right. The Diet Coke has to receive it. Folks, you can, you can remain closed to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That is your decision. But when you look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit that are listed. There are nine gifts that are to flow and happen in a local church body. And unfortunately, we're not seeing it like we should. We don't see healing like I think we should. Faith and discernment and prophecy and, 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 and all the gifts that are listed in those. Now, do we see them once in a while? Yes, but wouldn't you like to see a lot? And you know what needs to happen? We need to be open. And when we do open ourselves to the Holy Spirit, we're gonna see things happen that don't usually happen. Amen?